Let me Put also in the waiting area and stuff like that. Got us up to that point, but never. Yeah. Never all the way. Um, and I was not, I think it timed out, but it didn't tell me so. So I was in the interface going, what? and I, at one point it looked like somebody was in a waiting room, but I couldn't find the waiting room myself. So that didn't work. Mm. You're just trying to get rid of us. <laughs> You're in the butter waiting room. I couldn't find out how to open the butter thing. I'm in butter waiting for you. Oh, yeah. I was as well. Yeah. With elevator music. Which is nice. And I can't figure out how to go from butter in to open the room. Huh. Okay. Well, then, then ease of use is not quite there. Well, it worked fine. I think what happened is my demo is timed out, but it's not telling me so. That's oh, yeah. interesting. I have to ask, no, I have to ask to join the session. I didn't do that. Yeah. Do that. What happened? With I did that as well. You did. Okay. And it still left me there. It says, it says Associates Lounge. Uh, yeah, and that should be the room, but it's not. I'm I'm unable to get into it. Yeah, I was just hanging there also. I'm wondering who names these things, man. Well, they want it to be easy as butter. Yeah, smooth. Yeah, like butter. Mm -hmm. And Dave is still in the waiting room. So why don't you guys wait, uh, get out of the, drop the butter. Okay. Always lands face down. Hmm. Yeah, you right. get all you get all kinds of good jokes out of it. Yeah. Okay. So maybe well, we, some others of us can get a butter demo and then we can post that for another time. Maybe you'll have a butter experience. Yeah. Um. Cool. Sorry about that. Uh, so I'm interested in uh, how we want to move forward. I have not, um, I've made progress on my stuff, uh, not fully done with it, made a lot of progress on new website and the reel that I'm working on. Uh, didn't make a lot of progress. Here comes Dave, good. Um, have not made a lot of progress on uh, explaining neo books and recording some things because I know that that's the, the next item is uh, recording what the hell is a neo book and how does this thing work? Hey, Dave, sorry about that. I I heard I got some signals that there was something happening in Butter, but I couldn't find my way into the room to open it. I think my demo time expired. Is all. Um, yeah, I got the message that said associated meeting room and stuff, but or lounge, yeah. but you know. Klaus, yeah. you had shared earlier a link. I didn't get to to grab it before. Okay, let me let me put it out. This is the the book that butter I just this morning from the blockchain technology, and there's still another look set up. Um, but I met with an activist and, and this particular group. Um, so basically, they're forming a consortium where you have two CPG manufacturers teaming up with a uh, tech company that does blockchains to to uh, based on this $6 from you, the USDA grant to develop a uh, farm, farm to market supply chain and they, you know, they're talking with me about coming on as an advisor to the court. Well, I have to walk around for a sec. Um, good. So I'm interested in how do we organize ourselves moving forward? At what pace do we want to meet? Um, et cetera, et cetera. I think my first question would be, what is it you want to do with this? Because I'm I'm a bit of a loss as to where we're going. So to describe where, how do we do, how do we get where we don't know where we're going? I'm not sure how to get there. Um, makes sense. Um, I, I would love to explain what neobooks are and have a neobook or two out in some forms. Um, it's unclear at this point that all neobooks need to be books. And I think we, we got we got into some really interesting conversations earlier about, well, hey, um, are book artifacts going away because we're just going to talk to chat GPT uh, and in, you know feed GPT a corpus that represents some body of ideas and let people talk to that. Um, I'm still on the school of, yeah, we're going to need both mind maps or some kind of note-taking and book-like artifacts. I think they're going to be useful for a very long time. 
so I'm still still on that, trying to build that. Um, Jose, I think you're really interested in, and correct me as I'm going to misstate this, I'm sure, um, what are the foundational um, units of thinking that make up a point of view that make up things like books uh, so that we can figure out where our assertions are um, in unison, where they are opposed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So how does, how does neobooks accommodate a more formal labeling or intentional use of the building blocks of logic and arguments, things like that? Does that, does that echo for you? I think that's part of it. I think yeah. for me, the, I think for me, neo books aligns very well with this thinking that I've been having for some time, which is that it isn't necessarily the format of the book that's the problem. Um, it is the fact that the format of the book created a lens with which we see the creation of writing. And so we've, we kind of frame the way we write, the way we think out loud for the purpose of a book, which has altered, formatted uh, our thinking into sort of it's got to be 250 pages. It's got to have this kind of structure, you know, and, and we tell this narrative for a book because that's what a book requires. And in so doing, we lose sight of what it is that we're, we're developing, I think, as a, as a, as a communications tool. And so for me, neo books, just to be clear, uh, in a very fundamental way is an opportunity to rethink how we come to the thing that we want to say and how we say it and that it and that and it, how other it people has, use it pardon me and how other people engage with it and how people then it consume it but i think it's it's mm -hmm. it's that in a very fundamental way it's less about the details that you you mentioned I think those then emerge from that possibly, but it's it's rethinking at those three levels um, and not allowing ourselves to fall back into the rhythms of those other structures of the book itself, mm. of the of the online medium itself, of of whatever it is that we we do. So for me, that's the power of what Neo Books brings to the table. I may not be in sync with what you're thinking as a neo book, but for me, that's what resonates. You you are very always almost always in in sync with what I'm thinking, and um, I, what, what you just said highlights for me the the strange tension that I've had between trying to use something old because it's familiar to people who might be looking around trying to find their way in, but yet trying to rethink how we share ideas and put them to work. That, that's really what the Neobooks project is about. So it's poorly named as a book project, but again, books are just bait. And maybe we drop books and focus on the thinking, but then, then we're suddenly, my, my problem with dropping the book notion altogether is that then we're in the funny, squishy, uh, muddy waters of, well, now we've got ideas out in the world and they're swimming around like like paramecium in a in a petri dish. Uh, what structure do they get, and how do we share, and what does this look like? And just to confuse things, I've got you know I bought the the big uh, fungus org as that as a metaphor for what that might be like, but it's not metaphorically rich yet, right? The when I say when I say that books are the fruiting bodies or the mushrooms of the big fungus. I mean very, very specifically that the the mycelial structure is where all the ideas live, but then now and then something pops up above earth because this thing wants to reproduce. And gosh, that looks like a book because it's got a book cover. It's it's 250 pages lined up. And Jose, you're completely right that the structure of books has really molded how we think and how we think about sharing ideas, not often in fruitful ways. And I, I love that. That's a that's a great insight. Go ahead, Gil. Um, books are one kind of fruiting body. 
Correct. And and there's lots of like a presentation, a PowerPoint is another yeah. well-known yeah. fruiting body. So there's the international, you know, underlying mycelial web of everything. And then there's things that emerge from that and become recognizable to people in different physical forms and different, you know, electromagnetic spectrum wavelengths and different ways. You know, I, I may see things that you don't see different forms, but what I, I, I I'm a latecomer, so I don't know that I have a vote here, but I think books is important because you have to, an invention has to push off from something. Um, go ahead and sell, sell that some more, will you? Um, it, it, <laughs> yeah, if I try to do a high jump in from extravehicular activity around the space station, I can't do anything. I got I to gotta push on something to go into the next place. EBA uh, high jumping is not going to be in the next Olympiad, that's for sure. Yeah, and... <laughs> But you know, but break dancing is for God's sake. I, which is really weird. Can I just say? Uh, are you kidding me? Is that, is that real? Break no, dancing is an is an is an event in Paris. These kids these days, yeah. Okay. There's that. But, no, but um, um, I was just in a in a remarkable um, business course yesterday. One of the one of the theses they were putting forward is that um, it's a much better investment to improve what you've got than to constantly invest in new things. We can argue about that a lot, but from a business perspective, you can see the value of, you know, incremental improvement on stuff that's working uh, has to be the foundation of the stuff that is jumping off into the nowhere or, you know, or, or emerging from a point source, a point source in, in, in free space. Um, people recognize book. Uh, and you guys are, keep saying 250 pages, but I'm seeing books that are 24 pages and a thousand pages and serialized and other forms. I mean, the 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 unifying thing here is um is 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 it's not even i was going to say artifact but it's not even artifact it's artifact and process that moves stuff between people um um i i i, I haven't been in, i haven't been in one of these for many many months and what attracts me to the topic is the ability to um to to um move ideas out from here to here to there in many different forms quickly uh, interactively, um, what's the word? Intertwingly. I mean, like not not a thing that stands by itself, but a thing that connects to other things, and that is maybe multi-author, and that's a dynamic process. And so, I've taken to saying books in quotes because that's what people are listening for, and I'm putting the quotes that say, "Well, maybe it's not a 250-page brick of tree pulp, but it's something." So. Uh, just try to think outside the book in the uh, yeah. in the chat. That might be a fun tagline. And and Gil, you are stating nicely all the reasons I called this neo books at the start of the project and the, the the intentions I've had. It's like when I introduce the neo books projects, I'm like book books are bait. They mm -hmm. are a shiny object that is well understood culturally. Um, yes, there are variants of books that are longer, shorter, but Jose is making really excellent points about the limitations of the book format. And the danger we run is that we focus on books so much that we get target fixation and we wind up losing the more interesting and more important mission here, which is how do we share and reuse and repurpose and remix ideas and improve yeah. ideas yeah. Commu communally in the commons. And, and let it be said that Charles Dickens didn't write books. He wrote newspaper articles. He was he wrote, serialized. He, was he, he always a, serialized? Wrote a, I don't know, but he did some of his stuff with serialized stories that were eventually collected into volumes. Yeah. So there's an example of a book that's not a book. 200, whatever years ago. Uh, Dr. Witzel, you've been patient. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I can come at to these things, Jerry, because I don't think I'm particularly interested in books, but I'm interested in it. I, I, I think it's learning. What I'm really curious about is learning. I feel like ideas are kind of cheap, not very interesting. Ideas that people take and do something with are interesting. Um, I have a set of ideas that I wish people take with, but take and live, do things with, you know, so I have a you know motivational direction that I'd like to, to go with. So to me, the issue is uh the it, that around neo books that I find fascinating is the uh learning piece in collaboration. So is there ways that we could use whatever the focus point is as a means of helping people, you know, explore and, and, and internalize it enough that they can act, right? Because to me, that's the learning thing is that they can act on whatever they've, you know, discovered. Um, and 
So I have no interest in books, particularly I feel like we've, you know, we've got all kinds of, you know, Ev's made a ton of money off of versions of books, right? And so <laughs> call them blogs, call them tweets, call them, you know, whatever, you know? Um, so I don't feel like that's the thing. And I actually wonder a little bit, right, if we're hooked on the noun, we should be thinking verb, right? I mean, what we're really interested in is is kind of flow. It's, it's, it's a, there's a repetition that's probably required. How does learning happen? You know, and so we've been looking at things like, um, you know, epiphany generators as the notion. I've been calling them burning embers. Well, you know, like I would love to, we've been having a couple of people in GRC come back and talk about their their path, their recent path, which is really interesting. So people latch on to things from their own, their own lens, their own perspective, right? So, you know, in some sense, the question then becomes for someone who would like to engender learning, how do I put things in front of people that are from their perspective? And so if a neo book lets people engage in a topic in a way that they can do it, does that advance the, the learning process, you know? And so that, you know, that to me then is the collaborative, can I create an environment where people's participation enhances their learning outcomes kind of. Um, so that's that's what I would love to have out of the, the neo books process. And that is uh, dead on. That really resonates for me, Dave. Um, for me, this is about learning, sharing, improving, um, and fixing fixing shit. And then I'm really interested in the connection between the words in in an artifact, book or not book, and somebody's actions in the world. How do we how do we help ideas translate to action more often in more places? Um, and that requires learning. It, it it like like learning is, I think the the way that happens is you 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 absorb something, you put it to work. And, and how do you minimize the effort of putting something to work? A, a long time ago, I wrote a little blog post that kind of disappeared and I keep reposting it now and then called the law of convenience. <clears throat> and it basically says every additional step that it takes to do something dramatically reduces the likelihood that a human is going to try to do that thing. And I think, I think a little piece of that might've come in front of Bezos and led him to do uh, one click ordering, but I'm not sure. I have no proof of that at all. Get a royalty, uh, but but that but but that's 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 the time when I kind of wrote this is like what right when when one click ordering shows up, and and I like the thesis because one of the problems with putting ideas into books and then protecting them up with DRM is that it's hard to implement the ideas, and then the other complication is people with big ideas want to make a living from those ideas, so they kind of tie up the intellectual property, they do all kinds of stuff, they they get cranky when people use the idea in some other way. And then there's people who hijack ideas and completely are not in the spirit or intention of the original idea and go, you know, make a fortune off the idea in some other way, which is something you want to avoid. Uh, and DRM is supposed to be trying to keep people from doing that, I guess. But but the whole world of intellectual property over protection, publishing, broadcasting, uh, uh, idea sharing is still uh, really messy. And I did a I did a short YouTube video that basically says, hey. Uh, the web is still stuck in me ma mainstream media metaphors. We we have not broken through and liberated ourselves to some new place. Uh, go ahead, Klaus. Yeah, so I'm <clears throat> I've been taking a, a somewhat different approach. Um, as you know, I've been sort of taking a deep dive into AI and and uh, you know, how can this enhance and advance what we're thinking. So. The, the neo book approach, and we actually jointly worked on this, right? I mean, so it was basically Stuart, Jerry, myself, uh, to to uh, to get through this uh, uh, series of thoughts. And and the way I'm approaching it is that um, I, I want to know what would a really smart guy need to know about the food system in general. Um, to and, and everything that's related around it in order to arrive at uh, an intelligent way to look at this. And so when we in the during the neo book, uh, first neo book, you know, we started out with a historical perspective an evolutionary perspective of food and culture, you know, and how civilizations have fallen because you know, they, they missed out on protecting their soils and Mesopotamia comes to mind, right? The desalination of soils and the, the Babylon vanished. And so there are plenty of examples of this. Conversely, you know, you have civilized cultures, civilizations like Japan, you know, or the Europeans who have lived on their same soil for thousands of years, 
without destroying it and without harming the watersheds. So, so what what are the commonalities here? What's the core learning out of this, right? And then so emerge forward into the cultural into the industrial revolution uh, after World War II and the application of synthetic nitrogen and chemicals and all of these things. So, so I wanted to to so my neo book one is a baseload you know, of uh, understanding the fundamentals of our current situation you now his from a, in a historical perspective and then going forward in in uh in in book two i'm again collecting nuggets you know i mean for example precision versus regenerative agriculture livestock the imperative of a plant powered future you now integrating uh, uh the the biofuel feedstock uh, issue so so just uh you know, one topic after the next, but the accumulation of that uh, advances the AI that I'm working with. So my view and your of your front your your process and Klaus kind of it's certainly it's helping you learn, right? Right. So that's successful in your learning, and it's interesting to me that I hadn't really thought about the AI learning, um, right? But I think that's another thing you're you're doing is is making a smarter AI. You know, it leaves it's an open question whether other people are then able to learn from this process. And I, you know, like Rick, you you stuck in your comment in the chat about the you know the inflicting wicked problems of the which is a process you are using for learning. The question I have is, does it help other people learn or not? I don't know. Um, so I feel like that you, know, you have to flip it into the into the learner's seat and say, what is it you can create that enables somebody else to experience learning? Right. And that really is the magic that we're missing. Well, as Pete was telling me, you under the imagination of uh, or under the illusion of training the AI. But in all reality, it is training you. <laughs> it's most likely the case. But yeah. the outcome is that I have an AI that has the capacity to solve puzzles. You know, that would take a really long time. Uh, uh, to, uh, and and you, if you even think of it otherwise, mm -hmm. so I, as a consultant, I can respond you know, to to uh, uh, to solving issues in ways that uh, you know that are just uh, uh, more helpful. And if now it doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, I mean I've devoted an entire chapter you now, uh, uh, spiral dynamics, to how do you convey the information. To different people living in different contexts, that's a, that's an entirely different topic, right? So you need to advance first of all your knowledge, and then to convey that knowledge is a project of its own. But in the meantime, you no, know, you you are. I mean, I mean, in in my case, I just did a study for the local field kitchen here, soup kitchen, and I wanted to know: is there are there any examples? And I think I shared that with you previously. Are there any examples of soup kitchens that have succeeded in accepting SNAP benefits from the government? You know, and lo and behold, in 45 seconds, it found there are six examples throughout the country that do that. I mean, it would have been, I don't even know how you would get to this information otherwise, right? So, so, the, so the AI is an accelerator you know, for you personally to train you on how to do it. That's a whole different topic. Um, Dr. Botelho, please. Uh, you're muted. Oh, oh, you thank go. you. Thank you. I'm sorry I was late. Um, yeah, I just I'm just want to respond to something that uh, David said, um, <clears throat> because when I'm what I'm trying to do is I'm not learning for myself actually. Uh, I'm trying to create a learning platform to enable people to learn differently. And there's there's this sort of um, tendency in our educational system to keep think keep things very simple. A clear, uh, you know, it, it sort of develops almost an aversion to complexity, uncertainty, and people want that. They hunger for something they can quickly, instantly understand. And I just, just so happened I went to an RSA talk this morning where Tim Khan was talking about his new book, Brave New Words, and I put a question in, <laughs> and it was a complex question. It was deliberately so, and somebody said. Um, you know, can you put that in plain English? And I said, 
Actually, it's a complex question. You need to take, take time to think about it. And if you put it into AI, it'll give you an explanation to begin your learning journey. So one of the things that I think the limitation of books is that it doesn't create the learning communities where people can actually come together and enhance their tolerance to complexity and uncertainty. And I'll give you an example. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I uh, did a presentation <clears throat> to, uh, it was more of a facilitated dialogue to a UU uh, humanist group. And uh, I got some pushback as, you know, oh, this is complex. I don't understand the jargon, whatever it is. You know, I don't want, why do you call it wicked? You know, and I have to explain things. Um, and right at the very end, there was an executive uh, engineer who had retired and at the very beginning of this he says why can't you speak in plain English you know and at the very end of it all he went on to a, this sort of expose of we have to have better greater curiosity to understand things or whatever and then I just gently pointed out to him well you know at the beginning you know maybe you could have a little curiosity about jargon and complexity I mean you know does it fit in there and he sort of laughed and, uh, you know, I just I just yanked his chain a little bit. But books, books stand alone, do not deal with complexity very well. They provide a framework for it. But where the real learning goes on is when you're in community. And the, that's why I like the idea of a living book and a living community, because they need to create synergies. And one of the women in the group at the end said to me, you know, I didn't quite understand it, but you make so much more sense when we're in community together. And I said, that's what we need more of, whether that's in person, online. You can't, you know, trying to help people understand complexity and wicked problems or meta crisis, if, you know, whatever it is, whatever word you want to use. You know, people need time to sort of assimilate and ask questions about it. But I'll, I'll just return to the notion of how to, I, I just came from another AI group um, where at the end of it all, I said, I think we should have a, a, a special group of people who are interested in, transformational learning and how to create human AI synergies for deep learning. This is a different learning paradigm and people react against it initially. And that's normal. When you are exposed to something, it's not familiar, doesn't you know fit your mindset, whatever, most people push off, push away. And that's a normal response. Now, the extent to which people reject it completely is a separate issue. But I would maintain that our learning processes are not very sophisticated in dealing with uh, complexity and uncertainty, and that's what we have to be able to scale up. And that's one of the things the Khan, as Khan Academy, as far as I'm aware, is not really doing, but they are creating an exponential opportunity to enhance learning at, at lower levels. So um, I just want to put a plug in for really thinking about how we can use AI much more effectively when people don't understand it. They can go to it and they still have to sift through it. You don't trust it. You have to verify it, you know. So, uh, you know, I think we have to think beyond just neo, a neo book per se uh, and thinking about, well, how does it set up learning communities where people can. Um, and one last thing. Yesterday, I went, I'm, in, I'm at the Jazz Festival in Rochester at the moment. And I went to the farmer's market and right at the end of the farmer's market, I walk up to the stall and this woman comes up to me and looks at me in the eye like she knows me. And I'm thinking, who the hell is this? I, 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 have I forgotten who this person is? You know, <laughs> and she was, she was representing the uh, Pachamama Alliance group. There's a local chapter here as part of the farmer's market. And she came up and just, you know, very familiar and started chatting. And I and I got to know about this alliance, which I didn't know about before. And it's, it, you know, espousing uh, indigenous wisdom. And it was a remarkable coincidence that this happened yesterday because it actually inspired me to write another song about para, uh, Pacham, Pachamama. So I think we need to have a much more diverse, creative way of how to engage people using multimedia, yada, yada and how do we create community, learning communities that are more sophisticated than we've done so far? So that's my two cents. So over to the next respondent. Thanks. Rick, I've got a, several things I want to say. First, I think you encountered a really sophisticated sidewalk, paid sidewalk intercept person who was young and cute and knows that when they look at you, no, neither? 
Uh, you're muted. Uh, oh, sorry. No, she she was in her seventies. This woman. Oh, old and cute. Oh, there, there you go. Uh, okay. An elderly, gray-haired woman. <laughs> but but new to walk up to you with a sense of familiarity and immediately like you were like, what? Did I forget that I that I know her? That's that's the perfect response uh, to elicit from you. Separately, <laughs> separately, and I feel your pain, and I'm I want to apologize for what I'm going to say, but um, when you're in this room. When you're in the Neobooks calls talking or in OGM talking, when I see you online and we're talking, you make tremendous sense to me. I agree with every word that comes out of your mouth. I'm on board. I love how you express yourself here. I don't think I've been able to finish reading any of your posts. Your titles, you, you pile everything into every sentence or every title, and it, you, it feels like I'm poking at a hologram where everything represents everything and you don't pull things out and synthesize them to the point where I want, where my brain is able to engage and I am happy thinking complicated thinking. But when you do the equity meta muse, the, the, I, I don't even remember the, the phrase you use all the time, my brain just shuts down. And I think that all these people telling you you're expressing yourself too complicatedly in writing might be giving you feedback that's useful. Because when you're talking here, I am so on board and your insights are awesome. I can't get through your writing. I just can't engage with it. And I, don't, and I try. I sit there and I read through and then they're really long posts. And halfway down, I'm like, well, it seems like you just said that five times just above and I'm lost. So I apologize. But, but no, no, no. I, I think these people might anything. be telling you yeah. something valuable and useful to how you write. You might use ChatGPT to simplify and reorganize your writing or to critique your own writing. Say, put a couple of your blog posts in and say, what do you think? Is this, like, what level is this written for? Is this accessible? Whatever. And then could you rewrite it for a fifth grader and see what happens and what comes out? Yeah, I, I, I'm very familiar with what you're saying. And and the the, the it, what you're telling me, I, I, I've already heard and David's given me similar sort of feedback as well. I, the, 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 the thing is, is how to create uh, I mean, for example, I say certain thing. Put the question in, in, in you know, AI and look at it. it's, it's a, it's a mindset shift. And I'm not sure how to pitch it. You know, I'm. Still are you waiting for all it. of us? Are you waiting for all of us to learn how to read your posts better? No, no. I'm asking you to use AI if you can't understand a question to put it into AI and and and. Uh, why? Why should, why, should we, why should we process your posts through AI to understand them? I'm not. I'm not getting what you're saying right now. Well, well, because you're, you're, I'm talking about a different la learning paradigm where people have to be reoriented about how to use AI in a synergistic way. Now, That's you're, what talking I'm talking about, about. now you're talking about content of posts and how we learn, which I, I'm happy to have that conversation. I'm just trying to offer feedback on the difference between your speaking and your writing. Oh, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And part of it is trying to, to see where the fulcrum point is where, you know, you obviously react very negatively to it. And, you know, I understand, but uh, it's also a question of how to give people some orientation to be able to engage with it. So that's what I'm, my struggle is. So, you know, writing songs, for example, I've been starting writing songs and, as a way of engaging people. And actually, I used a song to evoke people's reactions. So a song is, is sort of a, a different vehicle for being able to generate uh, dialogues. So, um, anyone else want to step into this and and no, I, you yeah, know you, was, what you're. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe an example. Uh, I'm just writing a newsletter in partnership with Shimon um, about uh, nutrition and the impact nutrition has on the development of a fetus and the child for the first 1,000 days. So both Shimon and I have separately taken a real deep dive into, and for extended periods of time, Shimon in a sense from a, from a, uh, a neuroscientist, in my case, in a sense of uh, uh, nutrition you know, and, and food, and we partnered, we joined this together, and we, we, we are writing a newsletter that is meant to be really easily understood by a mother, yeah? by a pregnant woman, you know, by, 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 uh, by women in, in, in general to link the importance of 
the nutrients that you need to, to grow into a healthy child, into a healthy person with what's happening in the soil, right? And, and, and the, the, the micronutrients and the quality and value of the micronutrients in the soil. Now, in the neo book phase, right? Because Shimon is doing this in a similar, I mean, he's writing, you know, sort of in the neo book phase, you're developing knowledge, right? And then you want that, but that's a different process than passing on knowledge to people who mm -hmm. don't have any idea of the process that you took to arrive at this knowledge. But then you're using this knowledge to convey a piece of information you know, that is just very strategic and very important for many reasons. So I think in the neo book, my, my, my uh, energy in, in the neo book process is to develop a frame that uh, informs both the AI and myself on the broader context, meta level context of food and agriculture, nutrition, and so on, and then use that knowledge in very strategic way to implant pieces of information that are useful, you know, to to the gen to a general public. Yeah, well, I mean, what you're describing is something which I'm familiar with, and and you have to remember the target audience isn't isn't uh, the you know re reducing to a fifth grade reading level. Um, it's trying to enhance the sophistication of people who are interested in complexity and uncertainty how to do it. So I'll give you one example that touches on your point. I'm reading Michael Greger's book is about how not to age. It's got 20,000 references, incredibly detailed. And it's not, it's, not, it's not aimed for the general public. It's aimed for people who are, you know, medicine, nutrition, whatever, and, and, and sophisticated readers. Uh, and it takes a lot to do it. Now, I wish that he would do exactly what you said, because it'll make it more acceptable, uh, more accessible to a larger audience. And so, um, you know, where I'm, I'm struggling with is, is well, if you're going to try and, um, you know, I, I belong to another group called Complexity, uh, Complexity Scholars, where we, we get into this stuff, because there's sort of a language about complexity that isn't easily translatable. I mean, you can use metaphors, yada, yada, but it will only raise people's game a little bit in terms of, of thinking about it. And then if you want to go to the level of meta governance uh, and thinking about the meta crisis, then you, you know, you have to think differently. So, um, you know, that's part of my struggle is, is how to, uh, I, I'm going after a niche market and, you know, um, the people who are thinking about how to develop uh, learning programs over time that engages people. So, but in um, this meeting, it's about the accumulation of knowledge in a neo book context. The way I understand it. So, right. so, so, Klaus, if 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 a neo book were written for a really niche market, that'd be just fine. Rick, my question to you is: Are you finding your niche? Do you have a, a, a posse of people, however however large or small? that totally grooves on the things you're writing that are showing up because of how you're writing them and that get it and are changing their activity. Like, is the way you're putting these ideas into the world in text working? Uh, to, to some extent, I mean, I, there, you know, it's a question of finding people. I mean, there are groups that I go to like systems thinkers or complexity groups, which is, you know, a, a, a small niches where people are very intrigued by this. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a niche of a niche, but as I, you know, unpack this, because I'm sort of sort of thinking through how to, you know, uh, engage people. With it. That's the reason why I got them started doing the songs. I saw Sunni. I thought, well, this is a nice way of trying to condense something into something that's that's evocative in a way that people might be more curious to learn more. But I, 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 you know, I hear you. And, you know. I, and I empathize with your struggle to find the path out to connect with people and help them. Think better. Yeah. I, I think that's great. I'm I'm mm. just trying to figure out how to help you make that work better for you. That's my struggle. That's part of the process. Yeah. Um, anyone else with any offers of of help or thinking or advice for Rick? If not, let's uh, bounce onward well, with neo bookiness. Uh, Jose, it looks like you're about to say something, but you're muted. Yeah, came, coming to that realization as my mouth opened. Okay. Um, <laughs> the uh, 
the the thing that I I don't know I I've read a couple of your articles um I, I don't I don't know that they captivated me I haven't gone back to read more so um that's some level of feedback I guess but um yeah. but I I have I have found your comments about um, learning and community, I think very compelling. I think there is, there's, I think two ways that uh, community happens in a communal way where people are interacting with one another about mm -hmm. something um, and in a communal way where people are independently interacting with something mm -hmm. in a non-communal right. uh, setting, right? And, and I think that in today's world, the latter is happening more than the former. And so I think we need to, to address both of those. Um, I think we have this desire to bring people together to commune on something, learning, as an example, but my sense is in our fragmented world that that's really, really tough. And until we overcome the fragmentation, that our approach to having a communal way of learning um, as a, I think it's a, it, it's a natural desire, it's really, really tough. Um, that's my sense of it. And I don't know if that makes sense to you, but uh, my my inclination is, yes, learning more than teaching. Mm -hmm. um, that's really what we're talking about. And, and two, that we need to address both communal and non-communal ways of doing collective learning. Yeah, I, I would add to that maybe as somewhat of a hybrid because I think the, the question is then how do you, I mean, synchronous learning can be Zoom or in person, and then you have asynchronous learning, which can be done individually or in community, and that's where some of the wiki ideas, you know, how do those wiki ideas put a layer on top of a near book in a way that people can still come back and engage asynchronously as they feel so inclined? I, so, I didn't uh, use those terms for a reason, though, because I'm not talking about synchronous and asynchronous. I am talking mm -hmm. about communal. I think mm -hmm. I think there is a communal way to learn that is asynchronous. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I agree. But it's yeah, still yeah. communal yeah, in nature. And I think yeah. that's what, in my sense, that's what Neobooks is. It is a communal way of learning. Mm -hmm. um, that that's what we're trying to reach. I feel um, that is that that it's not anything that we know how to do. It's not mm -hmm. anything that we've seen. It's something that emerges from this attempt at creating a new way of learning. But mm -hmm. I think the focus on learning is an important one um, and not on teaching or information dissemination. Right. right. Agreed. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I agree with you what you're saying. We're just using slightly different words in terms of being asynchronous, synchronous communal learning. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it, it's not self directed learning, <laughs> you know. In some cases, it might be, but uh, like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I mean, but it's. Plus is coming at this from a different direction, which is how do I create a chat bot that is tuned to a particular audience's mm -hmm. style and 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 capacity um, to learn through which they can learn what they need to do next to change their small farm into a regenerative farm, to feed their kids in a healthy way, to whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't think that's different, Jerry. I, I think, think I think that's a different avenue of approach. It's the same thing in the middle. Yeah, and I think we're close. That's closer to where we end up than a book. Um, yes, I, I, I think I, I don't know where we end up, yeah. but I think that's closer than than the thing. Like the idea that the learning process 
that people want to engage in is self-directed in the sense that they're they're asking the questions they're engaged with something mm-hmm. and that the thing they're engaged with can speak their language can get to their level mm-hmm. and and can really address them from their uh, where they sit i think ultimately that is the 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 thing that we need to do i think klaus is hitting on a, a a very special part of learning, which is how do we build a a system of information that recognizes that the individual who mm-hmm. is reading or interacting with this needs to be spoken to in a way that they understand the world. Mm-hmm. And, and I agree with this, but and also we just spent, started out defining what a neo book is and why we have the term book in it, remember? Mm-hmm. But it's not because we, I think we started out saying it's not a book, but we call it a book, but then we put Neo in front of it to make sure it's, it's a, it's a not, not book. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and, but I, I just had a meeting this morning you know, with a group of techies and, and I tried to explain to them how, why the GPTs that I have set up are as powerful as they are. And I was saying we're using a Neo book process for training. And and then then I had to explain what is a neo book, right? And then I say, well, a neo book is basically you know uh, an accumulation of knowledge in partnership with the AI, you know, to arrive at context, the context that is required to illuminate a a topic uh, at meta level, right? And and we are talking about complex adaptive systems thinking, right? Because it's it's a complex adaptive system that sort of defies. Uh, easy, easy um, labels and easy descriptions. And part of that is 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 a complex adapted learning system, such that if the you know where the person's coming from, their educational level, you know whatever you know framework you want to use, that the information can be tailored to their level of understanding, but also to be able to advance it as well, so that they can become more sophisticated in something. Um, I mean, that's what, you know, the Khan Academy did with mathematics. They start off with kids and, you know, gradually built more sophisticated programs to help kids learn how to do mathematics. But I think I think uh, what Khan is doing is they're marching through a progression of things you need to learn in mathematics that build on each other. And what, what you're pointing to is, as things get more sophisticated, it's just being much deeper into math they're not exposing fourth graders to physics papers in astrophysics. No. no. Um, I, I, and that would be interesting. But but I'm, I'm really curious about your drive or urge to get people to level up their ability to process complex words. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and it feels like you mean it differently when it's written or spoken. I don't know why I feel that, but when you speak about these terms, I'm like, we're resonating completely. I'm, I'm like on your wavelength, it looks right. great. When I read what you write, it feels like you're asking people to level up to be able to digest what you're writing because you're mm. writing at some level that we all need to be thinking at. And it feels like you're asking all of us to level up to understand your writing as you write it now. And the feedback I'm trying to offer you is, it's not working, that you're writing as you're writing now is not penetrable to me, even though I vibe with you exactly on the things you're saying. Yeah, okay. Well, so, in so fact, I, 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 I'm, trying, you, to, I'm I, trying to hear what you're saying and distinguish it somehow. No, no I, I heard you loud and clear. And, and uh, what I have been doing, uh, I don't know if you've looked at it or not, but you know, I, I'm putting links into AI as part of the text so that if people want to look at it, they can. That so, got me. That got me more confused. Every four, every three, every three sentences was a link. Go see this in perplexity, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. now my head is going to explode. Re- that really, mm-hmm. that was not helpful. Okay, and, and you That's wrote good. me a very nice note saying, "Hey, could we use an OGM call to do this?" And I don't want to have this conversation. No, it's fine. In front of all of OGM, but I want to help mm-hmm. you. So you see how yeah. I'm a little bit stuck. No, I, I appreciate your your support and your candor as well. So, thank you. Thank you. And and. and I love, you've got, like, the way you're thinking about all this stuff makes a ton of sense. The way you're mm-hmm. writing about it is not expressing the way you're thinking about it well. Mm-hmm. 
I just put in the wow. chat uh, talking in color. And and uh, in Neo Book One, I spent you know, quite a bit of time explaining the uh, the uh, spiral, spiral dynamics, dynamics model. Um, and when you so so here, I asked uh, a pretty uh, I prompted the AI pretty specifically right to uh, to interpret different colors and how different colors talk. So that, that if if you are wanting to have an impact on a specific audience, you know, then in colors, the, the 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 color of your audience sort of determines a the vocabulary right. you can use, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, 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 the uh, idiomatic expressions you use, the context you use, and you can see in this in this particular piece how different uh, uh, groups perceive, for example, a question like climate change, it's dramatically different, right? So which is why in my mind, spiral dynamics uh, from a, as a communications tool is the most powerful thing out there. And by the way, it's being used uh, extensively in, in, in marketing, you know, in advertising. I mean, uh, what was the Facebook uh, 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 Britannica uh, thing there, uh, the, the scandal when Facebook extracted uh, you know, millions of uh, user data um, during the previous election, um, mm. uh, Britannica or something. Um, mm. They basically the used yeah. spiral yeah. dynamics you now to, to uh, uh, calibrate the messages they were sending to red color, blue color, you know, orange color. Um, mm. And it was incredibly powerful, and it still is. I mean, the reason why they have this lock on uh, parts of the population is because you know they're using uh, this technology. So it's just it's just a screen, uh, uh, Rick. You know, it's just uh, uh, looking at who am I talking with, and the AI has the capacity to simplify language so it has range. Right, you can use examples that totally resonate uh, 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 through uh, through a variety of colors because uh, the, the simplicity of, of it. Yeah. You've got me searching for the name of the, the organization. It's not Britannica. Britannica it's Analytica. Analytica. It's Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica. Analytica. Yeah, it's not there Britannica. Brit yeah. Britannica froze my brain. I had, yeah, my, yeah, yeah, sorry. It, yeah it, it did the same for me. It was like, what? I, was, like, was, I know, I know it's not was, Britannica. That was fascinating, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, and and so this technology really started to get really applied in the seventies and eighties uh, in advertising, you no. Know? And it's so perfected by now that it's just magic. Yeah, very sad. Yeah, it's crazy. Whew, my head was an explode if I didn't figure out what word <laughs> it was instead of Britannica. I was like, I was I was hunting through my brain, going blah, 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 and then. My, yeah, I, I have such a hard night, a time remembering names. It's horrible. I mean, all my life, it's 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 such Me a too. Yeah. Me too. But I have to tell you guys this story. So um, I'm at a North American automobile dealers conference, whatever, uh, in L uh, Las Vegas, and a, like 200 feet, 300 feet ahead of me is the silhouette of a woman walking away, never saw her face. And I said to my partner, oh, that's one of our clients. We're in Toronto, right? Like little tiny uh, dealership in the middle of the outskirts of Toronto. And I go, she's from that dealership. I don't remember the name of the dealership. I don't remember her name. I don't, you know, I think she's the controller there. You know, it's like, and I spent, you know, 10 minutes explaining to her, to him who it was. He's like, oh, you mean such and such to this day. I don't remember her name. And he says, but how do you know? Did you see her? I said, no, I just, don't you see her walking? So I could tell by the gait of her walk from a couple hundred feet away that that was her. But I couldn't remember her name or even the name of the dealership that she was working for, yeah. one of our clients. But you had geography, you had her job role. <laughs> That, that's Everything. my affliction as well. It's just so painful. 
And that means you if you you've got a very good visual memory. That's what it means. Yeah. Your visual yeah. memory is better than yeah. I mean yeah, some people my, have that. My linguistic my memory it. is is uh, <laughs> shit. Uh, but anyway. Um we have 15 minutes left in our appointed time for this call. I would love to follow y'all's lead for how you want neobooks to unfold more. I'm going back to this question I started with. Jose, you asked a good question. Like, I don't know what our target is, so I don't know how to say what, how we should go forward. I don't know if this conversation helped that. I think it did. Um, and I'm happy to have a couple more abstract conversations so that we can better define and lay out what our objective is. Maybe maybe that's our next couple of calls is, is agreeing to maybe even writing together um, a page or so that that says, here here's what our objective is. Here's what we think is important and, and how we're going about it. I personally feel that we we hit on, I, I feel more comfortable today with what that might be than I have in all these months of, of attending wow. these things. Okay, that's really uh, useful to know. So I, I think if we take what we said today, and I don't know, we I guess we've We're going to have a transcript. Yep. And a transcript. I think if we take that and turn it into a one pager, I feel comfortable assuming we do a decent job of that. I feel comfortable saying, that's it, personally, um, because I think at a high level we're hitting on all the big points. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's it's not about the book. It's about learning. It's about a way to to do things differently so that we get better results, so that we're not replicating the same BS that we keep replicating day in and day out. So here's here's what I'll do before next Monday's call. I will take the transcript of this call. I'll drop it in a Google Doc. And I'll just, I'll drop it at the end of a Google Doc. And at the beginning, I'll start some reflections of my own about what a short document that we might say reflects this. I'll leave the transcript so that we can, and I'll cut out, I'll, I'll cut out all the stuff that isn't about this uh, so that we have just the, the content that's rele relevant to what we're talking about, uh, but for inspiration. And then we can go back and we can kind of curate and together write a short, pithy one pager that describes Neobooks. Then I can drop then I'll just copy paste the new stuff into a, a markdown page and put it on, on the website uh, as that. Does that sound reasonable? I would say you could save yourself a lot of time if you did that with ChatGPT, but sure. <laughs> That's oh. true. <laughs> um, and I'll do that. And and Jerry, the, the, the way I interact, I mean, you already you, you know that better. The way I interact with ChatGTP is I give it background. So I'm actually literally telling it, look, we have this meeting. Here's what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, here's the conversation as it took place today. As we're moving forward, you know, we would like to crystallize the essence of these meetings. You know, what is your observation? Or, yeah. or uh, Jerry, what you can actually say is, in the transcript, Klaus told you what to do. So <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> all right, all right, it's a deal. I'll I'll, I'll mess with that, uh, and then we'll start from there on uh, on Monday. Yeah, it would be nice to have someone like David Witzel, for example, feel that he gets something out of this. You know, because he he's leading this network. Uh, there's so much he could be doing, and he's sort of struggling to fit this into a bucket that way it works. Um, I heard him. I, I heard him say he's here to, for he's here for the learning. And yeah. he wouldn't be coming back if he weren't learning something in our conversation. Mm -hmm. So that I think that's okay. But I, I agree with you. I think there's there's more there that would be great uh, if we make it work for Dave. Yeah. yeah, I think we've got a lot of good people that if we can figure out what it is that we're doing, yeah, we could seriously launch this in a way that would be helpful to ourselves and to others. Yeah, that's the goal. I mean, that's Kevin, for example, has sort of hinted that he, he could use some help in sorting out some of the things that he's working on. And maybe that's a new book. Who did? Kevin. Oh, Kevin. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. now come on over, Kevin. Oh. Yeah. Come on down. <laughs> that's right. Um, that sounds good. I just I just want to I just want to put in put this into the notes so see what happens with it. Um and that is, you know, what you described in Klaus was was really, you know, how do you using integral theory as a framework for targeting uh, people at different levels? It might be worthwhile asking what other methods can be done for that. 
Um, the other is, um, you know, I, I'm sort of um, working more at a meta level. Um, and so, you know, it's different than if you're trying to translate something to different audiences, uh, you know, and when I've done things in the past, I've gone from complexity down to fifth grade reading levels, you know, and work down that way. But until, you know, you work out how to manage certain things, it's you, you can oversimplify too quickly if you haven't got a good framework of, of meta thinking. So that's part of my struggle. Um, and thinking through, well, if you're operating the meta level, and then how do you convey that to people who are sort of, you know, thinking along those lines? And then how do you then translate it to people who don't even know what meta thinking means or what meta cognition means or what meta thinking means. Um, and, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't got that far because I still feel like I'm trying to sort through how to think about meta thinking in a way that can then go through the process you were describing. Some of the most powerful meta level thinking stories are parables that come from ages ago. Mm -hmm. you know, little tiny stories that have wisdom embedded in them uh, that resonates at every level. And it's, it's simple words. You know? um, it, it, I mean, they are in lullabies, they are in children's rhymes, they're in all kinds. I mean, our knowledge, you know, evolutionary, has been transferred forward via stories. Uh, and so uh, it's not about... Uh, uh, dumbing down complexity. It's expressing it in ways that it becomes contextually understandable at different levels. Yeah, it's it's yes and I agree with you. And 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 certainly parables can capture it, an essence of it, but it doesn't necessarily um convey the nuances of it. So um you do need to have some reductionism so people get the essence. Hmm. Like, you know, be be fair and kind to all. Uh, you know, whatever meme you want to come up with in six words or a parable or whatever. Yeah. We, sh we yeah. should all cogitate on our parables, songs, essays, and <laughs> chat GPTs and reconvene next week. All righty. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Give me time to take right. a bite before right, next week. Okay. Cheers. Cool. Thanks, all.